and that's basically saying that you nobody's going to know your name, nobody's going to know what you're all about, and nobody knows what you got to bring to the table. So by him saying a big, a big man on campus, I'm like, man, that's that's really something. I've really made a name for myself here. As a <coughs> but like with anybody else, there's a story to tell behind that of how you got to that point. And I want to start about uh, about how I began my journey here. This really started in third grade when I um, when I found I had a big interest in mathematics and particularly multiplication tables. <laughs> <laughs> Third grade, uh, we would have one of these multiplication quizzes where you're supposed to just fill out that entire sheet as fast as you can and hopefully get them all right. Well, I was I was always the first done. There was one other dude in my class that was done around the same time as me. So we used to always race to see who could finish first, just for fun. And um, I usually beat him. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I found that I did enjoy the subject of math a lot. And I carried this over all the way until my family and I decided to move. My dad um, was working for a DuPont at the time, and uh, we were living in Detroit, Michigan, and they were relocating uh, to different areas in the U.S. So um, he had a few options to choose, and he chose for us to move to Texas. And in Texas, we quickly learned that football is king. <laughs> and as you can see right here, in Michigan, football was not king. This is me, my uh, very first day in uh, Texas. And you can, as you can tell by my amazing stature, <laughs> I had nothing to do with football growing up. I hated the whole idea of playing football. I had the one thing to do with it. But in, in sixth grade, that was my second year here, my dad decided that I should go ahead and be on the team. So he put me in a little league team my sixth grade year just to see if I was like could come around to it and just start and actually start enjoying this because all my friends were playing as well. Well, he could have been more wrong because I sat on the sidelines of every game and just played with the grass, threw it up in the air, waiting for the game to be over because I had no interest in it whatsoever. Um, but my mindset changed a little bit that that following semester when um, we were walking through the gallery of mall and he pointed out a guy to me. This guy was Adrian Peterson. He has he had saw him walking through the gallery mall. He was like, hey, that's Adrian Peterson. I'm like, who are you talking about? Is that, is that like Simon or somebody? <laughs> and um, he's like, no, I'm gonna go introduce you to him. So he introduced me to him uh, and we shook hands and I thought my hand broke me. <laughs> because he had such a vice grip on, on my hand and I was like, man, I gotta see what this dude is. So I went home that, that same day and I like researched him a little bit, searched him on YouTube, and I found out that he was a, a big stud running back for the Minnesota Vikings at the time. And um, I, he really inspired me a little bit. I was like, well, if he can do it, I possibly can too. And it wasn't enough, it wasn't enough motivation to play the next year. I was still too skinny. So my seventh grade year, my dad thought I should get a little bit bigger in order to start playing football. And um, he started me out on my workout. This workout was basically my definition of consistency because I started out doing two sets of 25 push-ups and sit-ups every night, and he told me to add one a week. And I, I went through this pro this process, and before I knew it, I was at three sets of 115 push-ups and sit-ups every night. And uh, this is when I first <coughs> met Adrian Peterson. This is how I looked back then. If you look closely, there, that's my hand being. <laughs> My dad, and there he is over there as well. <laughs> and um, I kept on with that same workout all the way through my junior year in high school. So that's set from seventh grade all the way to uh, my eleventh grade year. Now I stopped doing it every single day. And by my senior year, I met him again at the breakfast club, and you can tell a noticeable difference in how I was person back then. <laughs> but I tell you this story. I know it's, it's not anything pertaining to STEM yet. But I tell you that story because without that process that I went through, I wouldn't be here today to be able to share this story with you. Because without the move, without me playing, without me um, meeting Adrian Peterson here in Texas, without me starting that workout, I would have never gained the scholarship that I did in order to attend SFA. And I never would have uh, been able to be standing here before you today. But nevertheless, I had to be I had to choose what I wanted to do when I got here at SFA. As far as academics, so 
so I, was, I started thinking, what do I want to do? And I learned that, well, I started thinking, I was like, yeah, I know I like, enjoy math, and I know I also like science. Because in, in, in high school, I, I took courses such as chemistry, biology, and physics. And I really had a, a, a I really gravitated toward physics uh, as my science because I enjoy all the problem solving that came with it. And just, I enjoyed the whole, just being able to solve problems uh, through the use of equations and different methods. And also to figure out that I enjoy being innovative with my ideas in this course called construction tech that I took my junior year in high school. Um, we would, we would uh, start with a blueprint for a design and be able to construct it into an actual piece that you could use. Like for instance, I have a bookshelf that I created as well as a desk that I have in my room still today because of this course. And I put all these together and I said, okay, I'll be a STEM major when I get to SFA. So the college journey began for me. And when I first got on campus, it's like it's a big world for any freshman. It's brand new. You're like that little fish in that big pond, and you have to figure out a few things, especially when the season is fast approaching as well. So three things I, I, I figured out that I had to do when I got here. The first, I had to find some help. The help was in any range from advisors to professors to even your own colleagues, your peers. These guys are going to be the ones in your inner circle that are able to help you out and uh, throughout any of your tough times, help you out with any homework problems or just be there for you, just as somebody to talk to. And one place that I found that was very helpful for me was the art. This is where this is where I was able to get my help in my first physics course for a year as a thing. And I've been going there ever since then because it was so helpful for me. And I recommend that to anybody who's coming here as a first year freshman and doesn't know where to, where to really begin. The art is some place that you can go for like one-on-one -on -one time and get that extra amount of study time in here with somebody that's like a junior or senior level student who's been through what you're going through, what you're going to go through, and is able to help you in that. Second thing I had to learn was time management. And like I said, when the season's fast approaching, <coughs> you have 7 a.m. ways, 8 a.m. mandatory breakfast, 9 to 1 class, 2 to 6 football, 6 p.m. mandatory dinner, and 7 to midnight you're studying, you get pretty overwhelmed pretty quick. So what I learned to do was that I had to design a, a schedule for myself, like make a routine weekly schedule to where I would be able to stay sane. So to designate time to be able to um, have, have your free time yourself where you can just uh, just casually linger around or and can designate, designate the time to study. And the last thing, after I made this schedule, I had to stay consistent. And this has been a major uh, key for me ever since I made that schedule and it really dated back to my seventh grade when I was doing those push-ups and sit-ups. Like, uh, I started my seventh grade year and went to my eleventh grade year. That's four straight years I never missed one day because I knew if you miss one day, you'll miss two. You miss two, you'll miss a week. You miss a week, you might as well forget about it. This is done to you. And that, that sort of relates to like, you start a new year's resolution. Say I'm just I'm not gonna I'm gonna cut out the eating this or I'm gonna start working out. If you if you miss one day, it just starts going downhill from there. Before you know it, you stop doing something. So if you like, say if you're a STEM major or if you're any other major, the, the 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 goal is to be able to stick with something and be able to continue uh, perfecting your craft pretty much. And you have to just constantly uh, get better at it every single day. And that's what I learned quickly when I got here to SFA. And the, the definition of, well, my definition of consistency, um, I use myself as definition of consistency because I was able to write a, an actual quote on Twitter and I, I was able to figure out that if you want to be great at anything in life, it really all narrows down to one word, which is consistency. I made this quote of myself after about a year being here at SFA because my first semester, I got all A's, and I was like, okay, that was pretty nice. But how are you going to improve on that for, uh, for the next semester? And I was able to do it again and again. And everybody kept asking me, how do you be, how are you able to maintain this balance of athletics and academics? And really, my whole answer is, you have to set the system. You have to be able to constantly go to all your meetings, 
all, go to all the practices and get your work done in the classroom. And this is how I basically try to live my life uh, ever since I got here as a Like what everyone knows, uh, nothing comes easy and everything is going to have some challenges along the way. And for me as a freshman, just like any other freshman who comes to college, first thing that they want to do is they want to do it all. They want, to be, they want to be that guy who goes to all the parties. They want to be the guy who excels academically, it has a real nice build, and, they just, and I learned quickly that's not possible. It may be for some people, but those are especially gifted people. But I was able to um, designate college, put college into five categories after my first semester here. I said it includes academics, athletics, social life, uh, a job, jobs, and uh, sleep. <laughs> At least one of them is not going to get done. So, just because I learned sleep isn't that important. <laughs> second thing is that my, my second challenge that I have to face is classes that have challenged me to the point where I thought I was going to get a B. And the main course that has challenged me the most is dynamics. So, so I had a B in this course the entire semester to about around this time, because it was uh, last spring. And Dr. Downey came up to me and said, okay, I, don't, I know that you've had three straight semesters of 4.0, and I don't want to be the alias to you to give you your first B. So I want you to really dig deep and be able to pull out an A in this course. And sure enough, I was able to. And I, I definitely thank him a lot, because you never know what what little words you can say to somebody to really motivate them to get that extra push. So I really thank you for, for that as well, because I, Lord knows where I, where, where I would be right now if and had I been you give me that extra push. So now I'm going two more semesters with the 4.0 and possibly graduate with having the 4.0 throughout the profit my entire duration here as a fan. So I do thank you for that. And then my last thing that I've always had a challenge with is just maintaining that, that time management because everybody wants to be builders. <laughs> so I feel like this semester, all my professors got together and said, okay, I can make this man as life as hard as possible <laughs> <laughs> to not get that four point. <laughs> because I, I'm having projects, presentations, homeworks, and then on top of that, you can't forget football. You have meetings over there as well, just finish spring ball. And it's just a lot, of, a lot on you at one time, but you always have to be able to fall back on that routine, weekly schedule, and be able to just wear out your time and prioritize yourself to the point where you're able to be able to handle all that that's being thrown at you. But these are just some quotes that I live by for the day to day, just so that I can stay sane and remember where I came from at the same time. This quote was by Avery Johnson uh, that he told me uh, at a basketball camp like in my seventh grade year. He said, somebody is always watching. And I believe that more than anything now after this semester because I've had endless people come up to me that I've never even seen before in my life. Hey man, I, I, remember, I, I read something about you. You got an award, didn't you? Or, hey man, congrats on the award. And I'm like, oh, I appreciate it. I've never seen you before in my life. <laughs> That they've always seen me, so that means that somebody's always watching, whether it be visually or just reading about you. And that goes for everybody in here. Somebody's always watching, whether it's just like your future employer or just anybody on campus, somebody that's seen you, somebody knows what you're doing, even if you don't think that they, that they, that they do. And so you have to just watch your image and hold yourself to a high standard. The second one was from Eric Thomas. This is uh, somebody that I summed upon my freshman year in high school uh, playing football. And he had a quote that he's famous for now. It says, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And that's basically saying, whatever you want to do in life, you have to really stick to it, and you have to put in the extra work and time in order to be successful with it. And if you really want it, then you will make any, you will go by any means to obtain it. The last one is about one by Michael Jordan that says, I always believe that if you put in the work, the results will come. I don't do things half-heartedly because I know if I do, I can expect half-hearted results. And that's basically saying you get in what you put out. You put in half the work, you'll get half the grade on the test. You put in half the film study, you'll, you'll play for one half, but you'll be sitting the second half about a coach. <laughs> but as for me, 
my plans moving forward, I've been blessed in order to obtain a scholarship via the athletic director of the football department. He gave me a, a scholarship, or an internship, to John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory that's located in Lowell, Maryland. They're partnered with NASA, and their building was called the Europa Propulsion Module that they'll be launching in the year 2021 to a Jupiter's moon called Europa. And they're doing this because they, they have figured out that there's an ice layer on that moon, and they're going to do some flybys and see the flybys with this uh, space probe and see if there's any potential for uh, water underneath that ice layer surface because they want to correlate back to the uh, Earth, they know that anywhere on Earth where there's water, there's always life. So they're trying to see if there's any potential for life on this moon called Europa. And also, I do plan, plan on attending grad school, uh, trying to get a major in mechanical engineering. And I'll be applying to places such as Texas A&M and U of H soon in the near future. But as for my legacy here at SFA, I do want to be remembered uh, in some way, shape, or form. Some people may remember me as the guy who almost ran me over on his bike ride in the room really fast. Some people may remember me as the guy who never went out because he was always in, the room, in his room studying. But what I don't want to be remembered as is the dumb job on the football team who just got by in class because his scholarship was being, his school was being paid for by a scholarship in football. I'd rather be remembered as the guy who was able to defy the odds and uh, success both academically and athletically. Uh, 